Hi, my name is Elizabeth Sanchez, and I'm going to tell my story. How do you overcome adversity? When I was six years old, I discovered that I was not like the other children, and I didn't know the reason. I was in a school, and I found it practically impossible to understand the teachers and learn the lessons. I realized that my classmates were learning quickly and that my brother, who is four years younger, could do things that were unimaginable for me to achieve. Simple things like to tie my shoes, ride a bike, and understand the sum of two plus two to give some examples. For years, I live very confused in the midst of all, my of all my confusion, I knew that I was very loved by my parents. At school, some of my classmates did not accept me and I suffered bullying, intimidation, harassment, and great abuse. I remember the teacher sending me to the corner to stare at the wall for hours because I couldn't understand the most basic mathematics. In fact, I still have a hard time figuring out the change I must give back when I, when I purchase items with cash. Thank God for credit cards. I was born in Cuba in 1993. It was a difficult period of economic crisis for the country, historically known as a special period in time of peace. During my birth, I suffered a bronchial aspiration of meconium that caused three cardiac respiratory arrest. To add insult to injury, at that moment, the doctors worked on saving my life. The hospital experienced a blackout. Hard to believe, right? Due to the severity of my health, the doctors decided to transfer me to a neonatal hospital in Santa Clara. They rushed to connect me to a long ventilation machine, and I went into a coma for 28 days. On April 11, 1993, Easter Sunday, the doctors hand me to my parents in a vegetative state to spend my last days at home. They did not give up when they faced adversity and instead chose to activate their faith in God and belief in a miracle. Each dawn was a step towards that miracle. Surprisingly, every day my condition improved, and after several months, my parents, with the help of various doctors, created a set of exercises to help stimulate my brain. With patience and faith, my parents insisted of, on helping me get a better and began to see results within 10 months of staring the exercises. One of the exercises consists of listening to the classical music 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When it was time to start school, everything got complicated for me. And those for my parents, another stage and another level of difficulty and adversity began. My first teachers were direct in telling my parents that I will never learn at the pace of my classmates. They emphasized that my intellectual disability was very severe. According to the teachers, a school was going to be a torture for me. But isn't that true for some kids? Once again, my parents did not give up. Instead, they respond with a solution. They create a story program that applied to my learning conditions. They researched all that doctors recommended for my conditions and applied their knowledge and love to help me. Once again, adversity is faced and defeated with faith, hope, and love. While my parents helped me at home, I felt secure. But at school, I lived the scariest years of my life. I had to endure the hatred of some of my classmates in silence. Many, many made fun of me and called me stupid and mentally retarded. 
They got to the point of locking me in the bathroom and then they will turn off the lights. I was living my worst nightmare. Some teachers, perhaps, with no intention of hurting me, participated in the bullying against me. As punishment, they will send me to the back corner of the classroom facing the wall for not being able to perform basic mathematical operations. They insult me with actions and words that I couldn't understand. I was so naive during that stage of my life that I didn't know how to face my fears. I made a serious mistake not to keep up and tell my parents all that was happening to me at school. I justified my silence of the abuse, thinking that this will make my parents suffer and that my classmates will have more reasons to reject me and harass me. How wrong I was. I decided that now I would dedicate my life to giving hope to parents and to become a spoke person against bullying and abuse of children with disabilities, and even those without disabilities in the school and in society. We must be strong before adversity. I know that despite difficult situations, God has a way out and places good people in our life that we have the ability to change any gray day to a bright one through their love and support. Who said I have a mental disability? And what does mental disability really mean anyway? Something that I can assure you all is that for my parents and I, it does not mean giving up. Let me share a true story. <clears throat> I had a written report for one of my classes in the university that had taken me a month to finish or four weeks to be exactly, but for me, the four weeks were almost every day. I visited the university writing support center. I was very happy with my final result. When I turned in my assignment and showed my masterpiece to my teacher, she accused me of plagiarism. And I told me that I was not able to do something like that. She even reported me to the dean of the faculty. I was so nervous. I thought I was going to die. But by that time, life had already taught me not to give up. So I fought for my rights and everything was clarified. Through my lifetime, I have heard the words, you will not be in so many occasions. You will not be able to leave, they told my parents the day I was born. And yet I'm here, I am, 26 years later. She will not be a normal girl, she will be a vegetable. Although I am different, I am able. You won't be able to learn, they told me, when I start elementary school. Although I had my challenges, I graduate with pride. You're not like us. You're mentally retarded and stupid, my classmate told me in elementary school. I might not be the brightest, but I work very hard to meet my goals. <clears throat> you will not be able to study at a university. You do not have the capacity, they say. Although it wasn't easy, I have a bachelor's in arts in vocal music, and also I made it to the dean's list in several semesters. You will not be anyone in life. You will be a burden to your parents. My plan is to succeed and to make my dreams come true. With the help of my family and through a government program, I have now become a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, and um, on my way to become a recording artist. I have discovered that adversity knocks on the door of every human being in one way or another. My father tells me that adversity builds our lives and that difficulties are opportunities. <clears throat> Many of the obstacles I have faced in my life are due to the consequence of my birth, but others are inherited in any human being. Life can be unfair and we have no control of adversity and calamity. 
what we can be sensitive to the needs of others and fight for our dreams. Never stop seeking happiness in the midst of difficulty. With faith, hope, and love, you will achieve your goals. If I, a girl with an intellectual disability, can do it, I'm sure you can do it also. Put God first in everything you do and dream. Never stop loving.